Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing our examination of the letter that Paul wrote to Titus, okay? A little short letter that is just full of uh, <clears throat> practical exhortations to the body of Christ. And we're in the second chapter, and so far in the second chapter, we've seen that Paul started at the beginning, and he said to Titus, but as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. And then he starts laying out the things that he's talking about, and it deals with certain uh, groups of people. He tells the older men, the older women, younger women, and younger men how they're to behave and how they're to act. And we've seen all that in previous episodes. So let me just recap it real quick. The older men are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, sound in love, and sound in perseverance. The older women, likewise, in the same manner as the older men, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, not enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good so that they may encourage the young women. Well, then the young women are encouraged by the older women to do this, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, to be pure, to be workers at home, to be kind, being subject to their own husbands, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Then likewise, young men, in the same manner that these three previous groups, in the same way, young men are to be sensible in all things. Uh, showing themselves to be an example of good deeds with purity and doctrine and dignified in speech, which is beyond reproach. And the whole point of that with the young men <clears throat> and everybody else is, is that the enemy will be put to shame having nothing bad to say about us. So then we go into the next group. Okay, Before we go to the next group, this is the last group that's pointing out. I want us to look at the last verse of this chapter, and I think we pointed this out several episodes back, but I just want you to be reminded. He's telling Timothy to exhort the folks with these things. Now, the last verse says this, these things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. And so I wanted to share that to where we could see that at the beginning of the chapters, he's telling Timothy to do this, to speak these things. At the end of the chapter, I'm, he's saying, speak these things, exhort these things, reprove. Now, that's that word again, okay? We've encountered it in several writings, okay? Reprove, it means to convict, to expose, to expose these things, okay? Not only these good things, but expose the bad things that have, and to do so with all authority, these are not just little uh, secondary ideas and thoughts, okay? These are primary things of how we as the body of Christ are to live together. Now, back to Titus 2, verse 9. He says this, Urge bond slaves to be subject to their own masters in everything, to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that they will adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in every respect. So he's exhorting, the King James says, exhort the servants. So we have servants, we have bond servants. It's the word, uh, Greek word doulos, which means one that's literally a slave, okay? E either literally or figuratively a slave, involuntarily or voluntarily. We as believers are bond slaves to the Lord. If you find yourself in life where you're in a slave situation and people will say, well, we're not slaves. Nobody in our society is slaves. Well, <laughs> depends on how you define that, folks. Okay? It depends on how you define it because uh, there are those that are. Okay? And he tells us how the bond slaves are to live, how we're to function, to be subject to your own masters. It means to be obedient to be submissive to them, okay, to the master. To, to place yourself, it's a great word, the Greek word is hypertasso, and it means to align yourself, okay, to humble yourself, to obey your own masters in everything. Now, a lot of times people will, they'll get a, a, a little hyper arrogant on some things, 
well, what about this? What about this? You know, what if your master tells you to go out and kill somebody? You know, that kind of uh, foolish statement. Well, no, you don't do that because it goes against a greater thing within the word of God. Thou shalt not murder. Okay. But within the arena that the master has within your life, you're to be subject to them in everything. And then he tells us how our attitude is to be. We're to be well-pleasing, okay, well-pleasing. And it's interesting that all the, uh, uh, I'm looking at four different English translations right now, and they always use that same word, well-pleasing. It means acceptable. In other words, you're not going to be disruptive. You're going to be agreeable. Not, the next one says, not argumentative. Okay. In other words, contradicting, speaking against, being combative or anything like that. That is not how a bond slave is to act and behave. So verse 9 says we're to do what? Be subject to our masters in everything. Be well-pleasing. Don't be argumentative. Verse 10 continues. Not pilfering. Purloining is what the King James says. The lexicon says stealing. Okay. So we're not to steal from the masters. And people say, well, you know, I would never do that. Well, sometimes there's things that are done that are, uh, you know, are, are stealing that aren't viewed that way. You know, are you taking home too many paper clips, that kind of thing. But probably the bigger picture is, are you giving your best? Are you giving the best use of your time? You know, are you doing that which you are supposed to be doing? Or are you wasting your time and the time of your master, your boss, or whatever, and you're pilfering? Uh, basically pilfering the salary from him because he's not getting the benefit back from you that you could be given. Okay, So he says, don't do that. But showing all good faith. So he's telling, telling us this, that we need to be manifesting and showing the faith, literally demonstrating the good faith, that we demonstrate the good faith by our deeds, by the way we live. Listen to the balance of the sentence but showing all good faith so that they will adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in every respect. That they will adorn, okay? In other words, that the bond slaves will literally be putting on the faith in the proper order, okay? And will be manifesting the faith to all those who are around, okay? will adorn the doctrine, the doctrine, what is doctrine? The teaching of God, our Savior, in every respect. You know, this literally is the biblical, one of the many places of biblical support for that which we say. You know, that the world will see us far more than they hear us, that idea, okay? And so if you profess to be a believer and yet your deeds are detrimental to that profession of faith, and that's problematic. So what he's saying here, the Spirit is saying, showing all good faith so that they will adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in every respect. We as bond slaves, we as bond servants, we as believers, we as employees and employers, whatever it may be, we have a calling to live the faith in such a way that we're literally adorning it. We're literally enclosed by it. We literally are putting it on in such a way that the world will see the faith that we profess. Well, my time's up. Again, I'm Dale. I'll see you again next time.